so really nice to have with us today two all, all three journalists over here two stalwarts yeah. from the media well three stalwarts no. i think we should <laughs> no 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 yeah. it will become a mutual fan club <laughs> but kajal i remember meeting you exactly 40 years back to yeah, the year yeah, in yeah. october 23 yeah. would be 40 years back yeah Tell us about your trajectory. Of course, there's Kajal Basu, there's Ashley, Ashley Dilmelo, yeah. ex Times of India and Goa. First Kajal, then Ashley. Yeah, we 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 are we are in fact uh, very old colleagues. Apart from being college college mates, Stephensians, Stephensians, Stephens, and uh, we are also very old colleagues because some some of the initial jobs that we took were at the same place. Where uh, Times on Luka on Luka on Luka on Luka in the uh, Free Press Journal ecosystem. Yeah, on Luka we met over there. that was a very creative space no it was a it was nice it was very nice when uh, for example yogesh sharma took over yogesh sharma took over it became a very very creative place before that and, uh, before that you had dm silvera dm silvera dm silvera from goa i know i know yeah, yeah. that must have been early 80s or mid 80s or something yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 there were very few publications in those days if you wanted to become a journalist openings were few and far between but they were challenging and interesting they were very interesting because they give you a lot of space The thing yeah. is that they gave you a lot of space. I mean, I remember joining Onluka. I remember I went from Delhi. Uh, this was almost immediately after. No, I worked in Delhi for a year. And with with it, Delhi Recorder, no. With uh, with Delhi Recorder. With Delhi How Recorder. did I remember that? I don't. I don't Recorder. even know. And which actually came to naught. But then I went to Bombay. They gave me a job in Onluka, and then I went to Bombay. First time that I've been to Bombay ever. Crazy city. I had no place to stay. I had nothing, so I stayed in. various places until i found a place of my own over there yeah. a small room that i shared with someone else anyway the thing is when i joined on looker there was there were no restrictions on writing what you wanted to write you know you could be as creative as you wanted to you wanted to be you could write as at length about what you wanted to write as long as you did your research amazing freedom no amazing sort of freedom you don't even get today you know so yeah. i my rewriting experience i was as known as i came to be known as one of the best rewriters in the country really? it started at on looker really yeah it started on looker where uh, the so you were both desk and field i was i became both desk and field because okay. initially, though in those days you didn't have a sub editor sub editor and a reporter you had a reporter sub editor yeah. you yeah. know yeah. so uh, i remember that i one day i got a copy it's quite crazy one day i got a copy I thought it was uh, written not in the best of styles. I was yeah. full of myself. I was young. I was. Uh, I thought I was the best in the world, you know, and so on and so forth. So I rewrote that copy overnight. I sat in the office I and I rewrote that copy overnight. It got published. Yeah. And then the letters and the the uh, phone calls started coming in. It was by someone I had never heard of before. Who? Oh. My goodness. Okay. So I rewrote her copy. She threw a fit. She threw but it. She threw it. Obviously, she was throw it. You know, and the thing is that she was already a big name. She was a fairly big name, not not as okay. vast as it as she became later. But she was a big name, and she threw it. And uh, my reputation got established. I see. You know, for both defying Shobha Day and for rewriting, rewriting her it. copy. You know, so it was. Yeah, it was capricious. It was uh, not the best way to hit the. Bongs are in a class by themselves. Bo- when I wasn't even a bong. You know, I was a. You grew up outside. I see. I wasn't even a bong. Genetically, only genetically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, But reading, reading a lot. Reading a lot. Reading was always, uh, you know, reading. And the thing is that you know, in those years, this was what early 1980s. You know, in those years, you were supposed to be reading. You were not supposed to be locked down into just reporting, or okay. re- you know, editing copy and so on and so forth. It's not that you just knew English or you knew how to report. You were supposed to be reading. You were supposed to be uh, growing in wisdom. You were supposed to be growing in experience, and that's the way it was. So Onluka started that, and then of course I joined the Sunday Observer, and everything ballooned. You know, it was eighty, eighty three, eighty four. When was that? No, this was. Uh, Eighty-one, eighty-one. At the start, you joined it. At the start, uh, so initial team. Initial team. I don't quite remember the entire. There was yeah. There, there was. It, it was a good team. Initial, but yeah, starting it, from the start. You were you were with them from I, the I start. The, yeah, I was with them before Sunday Observer actually started. Wow. Because I was. It was the build-up. You know, the, they they were they were coming out with dummies and so on. Tiny so on. office, Jacob. Tiny little office on the first floor of a rickety old building that that seemed to be leaning more and more towards the right. You know, and which thought, building? Yeah, we thought it's going to collapse one day because the stairs were creaking. Which you know? building is this now? This was the, a building the in the fort area. Fort. fort area, fort area. You know, on the main road, 
and uh, this was right this was on the front and around the bend was jacob bookshop which owned the yeah. sunday observer you know and then we met vinod and vinod is the most colorful the most liberal editor i have met in my life I he was not, amazing he he i have not met any both of his mem uh, memoirs are by my bedside you know yeah. waiting waiting to be read page by page yeah. i'm still through yeah. them they are uh, you know i i remember meeting him first and he sort of gave me a look up and down and uh, uh, he shook he shook my hand hmm. and he had a limp hand like a cod cold cod fish you okay. know okay. so he shook my hand like that and i said okay what is this all about his trousers were hanging down low on his waist you know from the back side you could literally see his underwear you know <laughs> that was the kind of person he was he didn't give a damn about what 30s or 40s now he is in what age he was 40s 40s certainly 40s and he didn't give a damn about what he looked okay. like okay okay but then became then it started the love affair of the group yeah of the number of people there with we know who was the initial group the initial group there was uh, rehman rehman was it rehman was rehman Oh, uh, was it uh, Amrita? Amrita Pitam, Amrita Pitam, Amrita, Amrita Abraham. Abraham. Amrita Abraham. Huh? Amrita, sorry, Amrita Abraham. Uh, then there was a uh, what's his name? The the guy who died unfortunately. Ah, uh, the young fellow who died in Sri Lanka. The, the, no, uh, not Sri, not Sri Lanka. Sorry, he wrote on Sri Lanka. I went there. I went there. I wrote on Sri Lanka. Yeah, I was the guy who was reporting. You went there. I was the one who was reporting. Mini White was not in in Mini White. Mini White was Mini not there. Yeah. Ivan Ferrer died at 36, I think, uh, of Ivan cancer. Died, yeah, yeah. Ivan Ferrer died unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So that was the team that then there was Jyoti Punwani. Jyoti Punwani, who is still active. Who is still very active. You know? Yes. And she was, she actually held the group together, where in terms of uh, being forward-looking was concerned. You I know, see. About feminism, in I terms see. of democratic rights, in terms of I unionism see. and all that. Jyoti Punwani was a forward. You know. So what a time we had! There was Jacob Publishing on the one side, yeah. which didn't. We, we used to have talks about every year. We'd have talks about okay, how much salary, of, what salary raises are we going to get? Yeah. So Jacob would say, Jacob would say, okay, fifty rupees or hundred rupees. Then we would have a pen down side. I see. And then we would go and meet the Jacob guys, you know, and then we would have a talking, a talk going on. We know didn't like unionism, but he supported us to the hilt. I see. He was responsible. He was responsible for breaking through Jacob's wall I see. and getting us good, decent raises every year without fail. He didn't like unionism. That paper changed the face of Indian media. It changed the, the Sunday newspaper Absolutely. once a week. Yeah. I remember Ajit Pillai is reporting on Goa and. That was later. Yeah. That's yeah, a, that was that later. Was much, much, much later. John Ribeiro was uh, yeah, contributing yeah. to it, but whoever he took on. I think uh, you know Sharma. Sharma, this guy told me that we not once called him to his office and told him I want this, I want the science page, mm. and it has to be. He just said you know that it has to be good. That was all the all his brief. And Sharma, Su Sudendra Sharma. Sudendra Sharma. He he right. remembers that's he remembered how it inspired yeah. him to doing his best. Also, you know, we not started the uh, first what you call the feedback, right? Readers feedback. So far, what had happened in Indian journalism is that you used to feed okay. the readers. Okay. Okay. You'd give them gyan. You would give okay. them. You would give them information. You would give. You wouldn't take back uh, information from the readers. There would be no participation. It wasn't participative. Vinod started the first half page. A full half page used to be given to readers' letters every week without fail. Yeah. And there was another thing about that. If you wrote something nasty about Vinod, he would highlight it. Yeah, he would highlight it at the top. Exactly. And if you wrote exactly. something good about it, he would probably throw it out or dismiss yeah. it somewhere. Yeah. Like if you if you if you had to give Gali Gurus to Vinod, then he yeah. would put it up there. He would up there, right up there. Highlight, highlight. Absolutely, he was he was fearless. He was absolutely fearless, and he believed that even if I don't agree with you, you have a right to say what you want, and you have a right right to space in my paper. You know, it wasn't yeah. like these days. These days, yeah. you can't go against the. Official line. The prevailing orthodoxy. You know, you can't go against. Whereas, it. whereas his magazine covered from the extreme right to the extreme left. Absolutely. You know, from RSS to Next Life yeah, in that sense, yeah. and you could see that that uh, yeah, you know vision yeah, that. Yeah. Vinod himself was centre right. You know, but. Uh, but a liberal in a certain sense, politically. Completely liberal. Completely. Politically liberal, liberal yeah. economically centre right yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he was completely liberal, and many of us working there were distinctly left. Yeah. 
you know we jola were walas jola union, walas yeah we were parts of Activist. unions we yeah. were parts of you know student of, movements and yeah. yeah and those were times of ferment no i mean the those 70s were, were just of, over amazing times of the ferment. 70s in india yeah. were just over yeah. so many of us were affected yeah. by it in colleges yeah. and you know and uh, we know those were this great sense of design which was given by this uh, spanish Spanish no, designer, no, 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 no. Def, no. Garcia, oh, Def, Garcia, no. Def, Def, Def. Ah, ah the Muslim, Muslim guy. Muslim guy, Muslim guy. Irfan, oh no. Um, how can I forget his name? I know, I know. Uh, you know, and his his sense of design was no, fabulous, yeah. absolutely fabulous. Sh- yeah. For the first time in the country, yeah. you yeah. had a newspaper that was designed. One, yeah. You know, it was actually designed from top to bottom. Yeah. You know, the font had been designed there. Yeah. The uh, the uh, you know the, the the name had been designed yeah. everything had been designed. it looked fantastic it looked fantastic you know and that was the first time in the country that that happened yeah so uh, yeah i mean it changed it changed everything in india it changed everything on the media scene on the media scene it was a fascinating read it was great and uh, you could read it for the full week you know i mean 16 or pages yeah, or yeah, 20 yeah, or whatever it yeah. was so also you know the thing is that we know it started what you call long form journalism hmm. in the country And imagine doing that in a newspaper, not a magazine, where you have all the space in the world. Yeah. But to do it in a newspaper, we would have full page reports, full page reports. I mean, can you imagine? Two thousand, three thousand words. Yeah, full page reports. Every week there was a full page report. Every week, that is long long form journalism. He wouldn't give you a lot of time, great lot of time to go and okay. write it or do it or whatever okay. it is, you know. Which made you think. Which made you research. And it was still you know, very readable. Yeah, was, v- absolutely. Plus, plus photography in that plus sense, no? Photography. Yeah, photography was yeah, really. Yeah. So you know, I mean, imagine being responsible for so many things. Yeah. That started in the country. Design, newspaper design, long form journalism. Yeah. Uh, readers' feedback. You know, uh, not diversity of views. Diversity of views. Not being scared of the uh, the prevailing powers that be. Yeah. You know, um, There hasn't been another newspaper like that in the country. It just doesn't happen. There haven't been any editors like that in the country. Hmm. No, after. Uh, Kajal, if you have to look back at your uh, appraise, appraise your uh, this uh, come, appraise your uh, different newspapers you and magazines you worked for. How would how would you rate them? Just you know going by Sunday chronology. Sunday Observer number one. Sorry. Sunday Observer number one. Uh, that made me who I am. You know and. Uh, it not only made me uh not only formed me as a journalist you know with with a certain distinct with a certain distinct world view and how to look at the world and how mm. to see things and how to look at things without closing your mind so that was the sunday observer and the second one was tehelka long stint also also a stint from beginning to the end really from before the beginning to the end telka.com not uh, okay. not telka magazine okay. uh, i worked later for only 4 months for telka.com for 2 years mm. for 2 years okay. that happened okay. and i was there before telka started which years this was this was 2002 2002 till 2002 yeah 2002 you know and uh, tarun was a friend of mine before that tarun tej pal yeah. tarun jeet yeah. as yeah. i used to call him sir tarun jeet tej pal uh, was a friend of mine before that because we had worked in india, in india today together so he used to keep bouncing off ideas about this uh, from A year before that, I actually see. started. I see. You know, those were the early dot com years, no? Oh, it was still untested. Man, yeah, it was untested. I mean, we used to put up fifty eight to sixty pages every single day. Wow! Not only just every single day, they used to be revived every single hour. Really? Yeah. So you had stories, breaking stories, being published in Telka that yeah. would break in the newspapers only twenty four hours after. Wow! You know, so it was, it was. to die for you know we were on our feet all the time I we see. had various sections we had news we had politics we had the arts we had and there was a fantastic range of read writers and sub editors yeah. who some of them were fresh out of college i see and uh, who were just recognized for being what they were which is very good with the language very good with writing very good with uh, thinking connecting the dots and all that and uh, you know who would like to work for for a place like that Yeah. But you are breaking not only breaking stories that will not appear in newspapers yeah. for another twenty to twenty four hours, and this was before uh, the online world took over. You know, Telka was the first of the online newspapers. So and you feel that uh, desk people and rewriters have got devalued over yeah, the years? They don't. Yeah, they don't. 
They it's not a skill recognized. No, you know, uh, desk people have never been valued very much. I think they should be, like like in The Economist, they should be given bylines, you know, all over everyone else. And uh, reporters are just reporters, you know, they will reduce to just reporting. They don't need to know how to write. Oh, the desk will do it for you, you know, yeah. just, just give the information. But the point is, a lot of reporters are good writers themselves. You know, they know how to write, they know how yes. to do the story, yes. they know how to hang a piece together. But no, they'll write, the desk will take it over, that's the desk will formulate the story as they want to, you know. Who? That's mine, I think. No problem. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. So, I don't know it was. Some interesting. Old, old so which are the, sorry, which are the papers you feel or magazines in the country which have shaped journalism in, a, in the most significant way, in your opinion? If you had to name, say, maybe three or I five. I think a lot of them, you know, like the Hindu, for example. You know, it will shape journalism. Uh, surprisingly, although it's nowhere in the picture now, the statesman, you know, on what writing was all about, on how you could write. They would take people who writing stories just on the, uh, uh, just based on how you would write, how you would I express see. yourself. And they won't stop you, you know. This was before politics overcame everything and before economics overcame everything and before the corporate world overcame everything. So statesman, yeah. A lot, a lot Calcutta was one big center in that sense. I remember JS, of course, in our JS, yeah, student days. Yeah, man. That was amazing. JS, yeah, JS was why I got into journalism. In the many first people, place. no? Yeah, many people got into it. You know, MJ Akbar and yeah, uh, Jag yeah. Suraya. Jag and Suraya and all that. Yeah. All of them owe their yeah. presence and, there. And uh, yeah, I used to keep JS during my college days, you yeah. know, in the magazine itself. And that is the reason why I got into journalism in the first place. Otherwise, I would have sat around. After doing my MBA, I would have sat around expecting a lecturer's job somewhere. You okay. know, I would have been happy to take it. But JS, I noticed the writing in JS, and I said, okay, this can be done. This can happen, you know. And so, yeah, I think Amazing. a whole generation of people, my generation, owe it to a magazine called JS, yeah. to have got into journalism. Telegraph at some point. Telegraph at some point, later point, you know, yeah. Telegraph is still outstanding now, it's yeah. in patches, in yeah. patches. They've got the some amazing headlines and they're headlines are to die for, yeah. yeah. The headlines are yeah. to die for, you yeah. know? And uh, also it's opposition to, it's yeah. basic tenet of... Uh, opposition to anyone in power. Absolutely, combative journalism. Yeah. It has to be combative journalism, which I think is the core of journalism these days. It has to be that you, you are in mortal combat with the government in True. power. You hold it. You hold it to accountable. A, you hold it to a certain, certain, certain bar. You know. You say, and this is whatever government it is, whether it's a yeah. Congress government, doesn't make a, a sense. Make a difference. Yeah. Whether it's a government today or the government that is to come, it does not matter. Journalism is all about holding power to account. You know, and that's why journalism is just dead now. You know, it. You think it's a challenge for young people to enter the field? Would you recommend them to enter it in 2023? I would always tell young people to, to enter journalism, but not for the wrong reasons. Not because they want to be in front of TV cameras, not because they want to be reporting from the field, you know, in front of TV cameras, but to actually enter journalism. Contribute. Not, not just in TV channels, not, not yeah. TV channel journalism, but also in print. Because print is not dying, you know, whatever people might say print is dying, and so also print is yeah. not dying. The no, but why should they enter? They should enter for the same reasons to bring truth to the light. They need to do that. You know, they need to be able to explain clearly to people what is at stake, what is going on. You know, not, and they need to be trained. Mm. And they need to be trained because these days you have uh, reporters on the field completely untrained in the way they express themselves, yeah. in what they say, in how they say it. Their political understanding is zero. You know, you just have to be fairly tele telegenic to be able to make it to uh, to being a correspondent in a TV channel these days. But that's not the point of journalism. The point of journalism is to highlight whatever is not being highlighted. You know, and there is a reason why things are not being highlighted. So you've got to get to the background mm -hmm. of that. And young people, yeah, they are the future. Who else will do it? Not old farts like me. You know, we are, we are, going, to, we are going to be dead in another 20 years. But who will carry the baton? Yeah. Who will carry the baton? A very important job. Speaking truths to power. It's as simple as that. If you don't speak truth to power, what are your life's worth? That was our motive for entering, no? That I mean, was our motive for entering. 
or even if it was not a motive for entering maybe some of us wanted to write well or whatever it is yeah. but it became our motive for entering because we were trained yeah. into that sort of philosophy. and we understood the importance of it yeah we understood the importance of it we were also trained you know our elders our senior yeah. generals and all that would train us to look at the world in a certain way you know to to ask questions all the time yeah. not to declare that i know everything i am the best i know everything in the world i know the answers to all your questions no a journalist does not know the the answer to all the questions a journalist does not know the answer Correct. to anything but we know uh, the questions sometimes but we know the questions we ask the right questions and we go to look for the answers to those questions even if we don't answer them which is why journalism is important because it asks questions not because it provides answers we are not supposed to provide answers Correct. policies are supposed to be to providing answers policies are made by policy makers we we ask policy makers what hmm. they want what they want to do yeah so we ask questions we don't provide answers kajal just a brief review of all the publications you worked for to, for us to get idea of the geography oh, just don't, don't, just don't, just, don't, just, just names just I, names change about 23 jobs eh. tell ya yeah, just mention no don't even tell the time it's interesting no I because this is part of history no see we forget now delhi recorder i don't know why it came to my mind i remembered what you had told me 40 years back yeah, somehow yeah, yeah, yeah. delhi recorder delhi and it was a magazine it was that a was your first that was your first it was it was a vanity magazine run by uh, you know opened or not by uh, a very very rich man who, who was uh, i forget his name uh, which group rajpal singh choudhury i think I it see. was close to rajiv huh? rajpal no pre pre rajiv Pre-Rajiv. This yeah. is early 80s, no? Yeah. He's talking about. This was 79. 79 is when I joined the uh, Daily Recorder. Post-emergency. Rajpal Singh Chaudhary. He, he was a very moneyed man ah, who opened this vanity <coughs> publication. Basically, it's just that I worked there for a year. Then I joined Onlooker. Then I joined the Sunday Observer. Then I joined Midday in Delhi. Okay. Then I joined Surya Magazine. What Surya? Surya. Surya Magazine. Then yeah. I joined. Um, this is not in sequence because I don't even yeah. know the sequence. India Today, the Pioneer, <coughs> Vinod Pioneer, Vinod Pioneer again, but it was uh, slipping out. It wasn't Jayco. It wasn't Jayco's Pioneer. Okay. So uh, the Pioneer again. What Eco then? Eco Times. What actually? Eco Times. Sure. Then I joined Eco Times. What was Eco Times? Eco Economic Times. Eco. Okay. 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 okay sorry. So was features editor of the Economic Times. I see. Uh, India Today. Then I joined Down to Earth okay. for the magazine. Down to Earth magazine. It was also picking up at one stage. It was picking up. It's still doing fairly. Anil, very Anil, good Anil, work, Anil, fairly good Anil, 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 Anil,
Yes, stay inside. Cambridge and? Uh, Cambridge at uh, Wilson College uh, Media Fellowship at Cambridge. Wilson. And at uh, the, the Postgraduate Institute for Journalism at uh, Berkeley, yeah. the University of Berkeley in California. Yeah. 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 And Cambridge thing was also, which he helped. By putting me in front of the big mirror. I didn't put you in front of the mirror. Okay. Yeah, you, you put it in yeah, front of the mirror. There. The mirror wasn't there, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> what, what if mirror? He had this huge mirror. Uh -huh. yeah. So then I decided to put it to good use. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I decided to go in a suit and all that. I yeah. the suit, but I didn't put the knife. Uh, button this thing yeah. and I started practicing. Uh, what will I do? This, that, yeah. wow. In front of, in, in front of wow. my wardrobe mirror, he was doing this. You know, and according to him, I don't quite remember it very yeah. clearly. I st no, uh, I do remember it now that he talks about it. I started laughing at him. Shit, poor you guy. Know, yeah. I started laughing at him. Not that it makes any difference because he got it. Exactly. But I was reminded of a time, I started laughing because I was reminded of a time when I was in Tarun's office. Tarun Jai yeah. office. And he was declaiming to me, selling the magazine to me. And I thought, what, what's going on? You know, he was declaiming. I mean, literally walking up and I down see. and he was declaiming. To me, who was sitting there, who was yeah. his friend, who was yeah. his friend as well as his colleague, yeah. sitting there, and he was declaiming to me like I was a stranger or whatever it is. Yeah. And I kept thinking, what's going on? I see. Why are you hard selling the magazine to the, the, the website? To me, I you see. know, I work here. Turns out, that, turns out that he... It turns out that when, when I was leaving the room, I saw that he had a small <laughs> camera placed strategically in front of, in the corner of the room. Yeah. Now that camera was taking a, Shot. a, a video of, of his declamation, you know. So in a certain sense, I'd been a patsy, you know, I was like, uh, what do you call that, a, a puppet, yeah. sitting over there, a doll sitting over there and listening to him declare. So I just remembered that, well, and he was, obviously Tarun was talking about getting money from financiers, getting money from funders and all that, which is why he was hard selling the, yeah. uh, the uh, website to me, you know. So I was reminded of that, which is why I started laughing at him, you know. And the thing is, he went on to get the, get whatever he was, he was trying to get. You know, Two things and on, one was yeah. laughing at me that. and the excellent jag raw jackfruit curry his mother made caught all. Jackfruit curry. Oh, oh, I yeah, never yeah, had that. Yeah, really? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Jackfruit curry is also a Bengali dish. Yeah, jackfruit, I think jackfruit all is over. Bengali, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's certainly a Bengali dish. Certainly a Bengali dish. You know? Raw jackfruit. So, uh, yeah, Ashley and I have been friends for donkey's years. You know, absolutely. It's good that you all met up in yeah, Goa again. Yeah. Glad that Ashley donkey planned years. it out. No, yeah. no, Devashi Chatterjee, one of our friends. That, He's the guy who was instrumental in getting the government together. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. So now, now we are coming to the end of our, uh, mm -hmm. our innings, our innings. In Goa. No, no, no. In life. I no, mean. no. Don't, don't, don't. No, we are not talking about dying or anything. Like no, that. because I mean, I mean that sometimes you know people post retirement projects are amazing. To give you two examples, Goa today was started in Lambert's fifties. What today? Oh, I see. And, and that's incredibly good work in the beginning, yeah. first 10 years. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the, the things that matter to us, like I was talking about, I mean, in the sense that I'm a political animal. I breathe politics, I inhale politics, I eat yeah. politics, I sweat politics, you know, and not politics in, the terms of, in terms of party politics. But the but, processes which but, are much going beyond human, everything. Human processes. Yeah. You know, Human developmental processes, human processes. So what you are saying, that's out today? We can't have options to do it, where including do with the new media and cheaper where options? Where do you have and options? Where do you have can't, options? We, can't we think of creating some? Is it not possible? Not with this government in power. Yeah. The eventual no, yeah. We'll all become BBCs along the way. We'll all become BBC along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. <coughs> uh, but there must be some solution. I'm still, uh, you know, optimistic. The only solution comes if the government can let go of its uh, intense stranglehold on uh, its own narrative, on 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 purveying its own own narrative through each and every media, you know. I mean, look, you look at every TV channel at the same time; they'll have the same ministers or or Modi talking at the same place. At the same Bharti, venue. every at day the, with autonomy, yeah, it's a joke. At yeah, the same camera, position. at the same camera position, you know. <laughs> so obviously, it has come from official quarters. I see. It has come from official quarters. You need diversity of opinion. You need diversity of reportage. Which is what will make the country thrive in a certain Which sense. will make the country thrive. If you don't have a conversation with the citizens at large, which yeah. is what media is supposed to do, yeah. it is supposed to start conversations with the, with the citizens at large. Yeah. And to sustain those conversations and to help those conversations that are good gain the prim primacy, you know. But that's not happening now. There's only one conversation going on now, one monologue. 
Yeah. It's not even a dialogue. It's a monologue going on. So under these, uh, I don't see where journalism comes in. You know? Three of the best journalists you worked with. We said things about Vinod, but yeah. three of the best. Tarun definitely. Uh, Vinod, Tarun, and. Uh, and I'm looking for another name. Okay. I'm hunting for another name. Um, and uh, I won't call him a journalist because he's the owner of uh, the caravan, but Anant Nath. Anant Nath, who actually is a son of the owner of the Delhi Press, which brings out the caravan. He's responsible for whatever the caravan has done. And it's it's an amazing publication. Fabulous work. I mean, fantastic read. In the face of an implacable government. Yeah. In the face of saffronism, in the face face of uh, establishmentarian yeah. opposition, he's carried it through. You know, you and need quality, a, excellent and quality. quality. You need a boss like that. You I need see. you need the owner of a newspaper to be like that. You know, uh, so these are the three that I remember. He's got a good team and kept it together. The only thing is that website and all. I mean, it's a paywalled website because they it's need sources website. of revenue and all. But that's yeah, understand. exactly. He's yeah. got to make his money somehow. Yeah. You know, he's got I mean, to make his money. It's costly. It's pro it's producing costly. good journalism is costly. Yeah, it's, it's very cheap. expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. So the thing is that he's carried it through through all these years of saffronism. You know, uh, nine years of saffronism, which is fantastic work. You know. So Caravan was this tiny magazine initially, and then it's it changed its profile Ca now. Car no, Caravan, I think in the seventies and eighties, yeah. uh, in the seventies. Inconsequential in was those days, no. Inconsequential uh, social magazine. Okay. You know, it used to cater to society news and this and that and the other, and then I think it shut down for a while after that. If I if, I, if memory serves. I see. And then Anand Nath decided to revive it, so he took hold of it. It was being run by his father, if I okay. remember right. Okay. So he took it under his wing. And I was there when Caravan was a fortnightly. Which age, which year this is? Which stage? This was, I left Caravan in 2014. This would be about 20, 2008, 2009. I see. I see. 2009, you know, about 2008, 2009. And uh, I was there when Caravan was a fortnightly magazine. Wow. You know? And before, then it became a weekly magazine. Yeah. And then it became what it is. Monthly. Monthly magazine. You know, so, uh, but he started honing what the caravan would become, wow. like what it is today, right in those days. So the man has a vision. I see. The man had a vision even back then, and he still has a vision, which makes him, to my mind, even more important than many editors that I, I see. know. You I know? see. Uh, because... If he had not hired the editors that he wanted, right. Caravan would, would have not got would not, would the way. And give a free hand to all the editors. You know? This media history story never gets told, it no? It never gets told. It will never get told unless we actually someone sits down to write about it. You know? yeah. And from an anecdotal point of view, not from a data journalist okay. point of view. You know, data there is plentiful around. Okay, this magazine sells so much, this yeah. magazine sells so much in this area, this is the demographic that it appeals, appeals to. Not that, anecdotal, anecdotal stories from leading journalists and not even leading journalists, from reporters, yeah. from ground reporters, humble folk. From, from humble folk, from stringers, from photographers, yeah. you know, from the body of view of photographers. You think anecdo anecdotal stories are important here to tell I think anecdotal yeah. stories are very, very important. You could yeah. write a thick tome, yeah. you know, every senior journalist could write a thick tome based on anecdotal stories. That's true. How many stories do we know? We don't, have, we don't have enough. We are full of stories, we but it's not there. Stories. It's not exactly. there. Exactly. We are full of stories. We are compendia of stories. Each one of us. Yeah. All the senior journalists. Ashley here. Yeah. I call Amare Ashley. You've heard this. Ashley is nodding sagely. But everyone should come out with their biographies before it's too late. Yeah. yeah. Or even, even memoirs or whatever you want to call it. Every journalist is a, compend is a compendium of stories that deserve to be told and probably won't get told, you know. I mean, after all, as they, as they call us, I mean, what do they call us? Uh, Historians in a hurry. We, we bear witness. Yeah. We bear witness. Journalists are born and placed in this world to bear witness of, of what is happening around. Yeah. And that means talking to everyone, pounding the, pounding the roads, going to the villages, talking about everyone. We are all stories. We are all stories. We are full of stories. We bleed stories from our fingertips. Yeah? Remember, if you sit down over a, over a, over a bottle of alcohol, and we start talking. Look at the stories that come out of us. Without a bottle of alcohol in some cases. Oh my. <laughs> well, yeah, in, in many, many cases. In many yeah. cases. But I'm just talking about, you know, when we're disinhibited. Yeah. Journalists, journalists also keep secrets. Yeah. We are also, you know, uh, repositories of secrets. 
And those secrets will never get told. Yeah. Because we hide secrets as much as we as we keep them, you know. So just imagine if those stories were to come out, what a wealth of stories there would be. That's a fascinating we vision. We bear witness. We are the witness bearers. We bear witness to what is going on around. We should be writing about it, that this is happening, the truth. Yeah. Because this truth, if this truth is never told, it will die. Yeah. It will fade. With us it will die. It will fade. And, and you know, people would say, yeah, there was some such thing, we have a vague idea of it. Vague but when idea, it's, exactly. When it's in exactly. writing. Exactly. So these days, when we're talking about a post-truth world, yeah. where truth can be whatever you're manufactured to say it is, you know, we need to sit down and write our own stories. And not just our own stories, not many dekha or many suna and so on and so forth, <coughs> but anecdotes from yeah. people who matter, you know. And that is from the top to the bottom. On that amazing note, we will end this interesting talk. Thanks yeah. so much, Kajal. Thank Real you so pleasure much. to Thank have you. you. It was, it's, it was, it's an absolute pleasure to have met you after all these years. After all these years. Yeah.